Hello, this is Peter Cooper. A very quick, scrappy video showing you some in, an interesting quirk, basically, in uh, Ruby uh, in relation to the struct class and a little bit of digging I did into the MRI source code to figure out what was going on. So I follow someone called James Harton on Twitter, and he said, I just discovered that Ruby's struct doesn't work with predicate methods, um, or more specifically, you know, methods like foo query, uh, foo with a question mark on the end, as he shows here in this example. So if I just copy and paste his example, um, take it into IRB, which I've got open here, um, as he says, it comes back with undefined method foo. So that kind of made sense to me because foo isn't really a valid um, you know, accessor or attribute name in any case. Um, but I was intrigued why it even gets to that point and allows you to do that. So um, just before I dive into that, just in case you're not familiar with what a struct is, a struct, you know, the struct class in Ruby is essentially a class that will create other classes uh, that give you easier uh, ways of um, creating attributes, essentially. Um, it does the getters and setters for you and uh, a nice initializer as well. So if you take a user class like this one and we've created, um, you know, use Atter Accessor to create name and age uh, setters and getters, and then we set up initialize in this way, all works very simple, returns back the name and the age as you'd expect. Well, if you want, you, um, you know, could scrub away all of this and do this instead. So you could go user equals struct.new name, age and it runs in exactly the same way with the same response uh, so this basically clears away all of that um, you may have seen this type of uh, structure instead which I wouldn't advise because it adds a, a pointless extra class into the middle but you may have seen that type of uh, mechanism as well so that is that right uh, so anyway so back to this problem well, IRB is probably the best place to look at this. So if I create a class which I'll call foo, I'll go foo equals struct.new foo. It actually does create the class. Um, if I create our foo.new, um, so I'll call this object equals, um, what happens is it gives us a struct, ob a struct object back and it actually has created something within it that looks a bit like an attribute called foo question mark and it set it to true. Um, you know, and this is true whatever we happen to uh, put inside. But the problem is we can't get access to foo um, back out in any other way. So I think that's a little bit weird. Well, the kind of the obvious reason behind this is that if we have a class like user, for example, we try and create an accessor called foo question mark. It doesn't work because foo question mark is an invalid attribute name. Um, part of the reason behind this is because if we were trying to replicate um, this behavior, we might end up with something like this. And as you can see, just from the syntax coloring here, well, for a start, at foo query isn't a valid instance variable name in the first place. Um, so it just doesn't work. And this isn't a valid uh, method name either. So what you might end up with, however, and this is a reason why you might want to use foo query, um, foo question mark, is let's say we do have um, an accessor called just normal foo. You may have something called foo that just checks whether foo is set or whether it has a certain value, um, you know, or anything along those sort of lines. But that's the reason why you can't create something with foo question mark. So what didn't intrigue, what intrigued me wasn't the fact that you know, that there was a mistake or an error in this, uh, but it was the fact that it actually does create the struct and it can populate it, but it won't allow us access to that value. So I was intrigued why that was. Um, and that requires a little bit of diving into the Ruby source code, which, as luck would happen, to uh, have it, I have open here. So this is the source code checked out from GitHub. And if you're looking for information about a core class in Ruby, you can usually find it as a C file within MRI in the root folder. So there's a file all about the array class. There's one all about the uh, hash class. And so there is one about the struct class as well. So um, if you get into one of these files in MRI, one of the best things to do is just immediately scroll right to the bottom. Uh, and you'll usually find an area where the class is being defined and then various methods are being defined against it using rbDefineMethod. Uh, this should all be reasonably straightforward, even if you're not familiar with C, uh, just because of the names that are mentioned here. So we create a class and we put it into rbc struct, and then we use that handle to add all of these different methods, um, which you can see named here, to it. So the ones that interest us the most are um, the initialized one and the new one. Um, so if I have a quick look at initialize, for example, uh, that you know is done by uh, a C function called rbstruct initialize m. So if I do a search for that, 
that takes us to here. Um, and there's not really much to look at here, but this is interesting just because of the way it sets up the memory behind the struct. Now, you know, if I was being completely naive about it, I might think that why do structs work in a weird C file? Why can't you just create a very simple uh, class in Ruby that just does that a bit of basic metaprogramming to set this up? Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the answer to that is, but I suspect this is just more performant and more memory efficient. Uh, but the way it does it creates some quirks, uh, and that's what we've been seeing um, in IRB. So one of the main things it does is uh, where it sets over the values and everything, it just does a big memory copy into a special data structure that struct, uh, structs are held within. Um, so it's not like kind of doing typical Ruby work where it'd be at you know, foo equals and then a value. It's just copying everything into this weird kind of memory structure. But this method doesn't really help us a lot. Uh, we actually want to get hold of the one that it's referred to by new. So when you do struct.new, what is happening? So we want this method here instead. So this takes us up to something called rbstructsdef. And there is some nice documentation here that explains how it all works. But we'll have a quick look. Um, we actually don't need to care about a lot of this stuff. The main thing that we're really worried about here is the part where it actually makes the struct. So that is this um, other function here called make struct. Now, again, there's a lot of stuff we don't need to worry about in here. Um, a lot of housekeeping and stuff like that and checking the name and things like that. What is really interesting, however, is where it, it sets instance variables for all of the different things, but then critically, you know, it sets instance variable for everything. So where you saw like foo query, you know, it's actually storing that as we saw. Um, but this is the important part, this for loop here, which is poorly um, indented. If I just add one space in just to help a little bit with this, um, it goes over all of the, what you might call uh, members. And the members are things like, um, in my user struct, like name and age and perhaps gender, things like that. So these are members. It goes over each of those and it checks to see, is the ID of that thing a local ID? And we'll get to what that is in a minute. Or, or is it a constant ID? If it is, um, then we don't care about these conditions so much. But essentially what's happening here is it defines uh, the getter and the setter method. Um, and that's what this is all about here. So here's the setter, for example. Um, it converts the ID into a setter, which basically just means put the equals on the end uh, and then you know, use the, uh, the C function RB struct set to implement that. So what's happening here is that foo query isn't getting past this test. This is the test that it's failing. It's not a local ID and it's not uh, a constant. Now, the thing I found interesting about this is it does allow constants through. So if we go back to IRB temporarily and I do something like user.struct.new foo. So this looks like a class name here, even though it's on a symbol, um, there's an ID. It still looks like a class name. Well, if you do something like this, you, know, you can use what this looks like a, a constant ID. Um, it works totally fine um, in this regard. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. But back to this. So we know that foo query isn't a constant ID. We don't care about that. But why is it not a local ID? Well, this digs into something very interesting in the MRI code that is a system that works out what is an ID. Is it a local thing? Is it a method? Is it an instance variable? You know, what is it? So if I do a global search, um, it takes us deep into the guts of uh, the Ruby parser, essentially. And there's a lot of stuff you can go through in here. Um, that will waste a lot of your time. Um, but the most important part uh, to notice is all of these things hit on over on the right here, which not very well highlighted on this video, I'm sorry. Um, but are things where you've got IDs, it can be constant IDs, it can be class IDs, it can be junk IDs, um, and things like that. So we need to see where are all these things uh, getting set and getting checked. Well, you do have to jump around this file a little bit, unfortunately. Um, but uh, let's have a look. So this is where it gets a little bit uh, haphazard, me jumping through this file. Right, this is what we want. Um, so there is a C function called rbstr, so rb ruby string sim name type, and what it will do is it will accept a, um, a string essentially, and it will tell you what type of the ID it represents. So if I go and find the method for this, I keep saying method, but in C I mean function really. So here we go. Um, now it does a bunch of stuff to do with the string encoding that we can kind of ignore. 
Uh, so what we actually want to jump into this inner kind of uh, function called Ruby encoded um, sim name type. So we're going to look for that one instead. And this is where all the fun happens. So what happens is a name comes in. Um, it immediately assumes that any ID is junk straight out the gate. Uh, it does things like check the length and stuff like that. Um, and then what it does is it says, right, the first character is the first character a dollar sign. If it is, it's a global variable. Um, so when you were learning Ruby, hopefully you learned that something like dollar $x. You know, this is a global variable. It's accessible from anywhere. Um, hopefully, you know, this is uh, all reasonably obvious to you. I won't demonstrate all of the others, um, but there's various other things that it checks for. Um, it checks for like instance um, variable IDs. Uh, it checks for double at signs for class variable IDs and so on and so forth. Well, the most interesting part is when it gets down uh, to here where it works out, is the first character uh, uppercase or not? If it is, then this is the ternary operator here, make it a constant. Um, if it's not, then it's probably a local ID. So you think, okay, we're a local ID so far with our foo query. But it doesn't last for very long. If your ID ends in a bang or exclamation mark or a question mark, then if it's not already been considered to be um, you know, one of these things, it will break out, essentially. Um, and so we end up with uh, you know, it not being uh, a local, essentially. So when we come back to here, our foo query isn't considered a local, so it doesn't create... Um, you know, a setter and a getter for it. So that is why uh, the code that uh, James mentioned, which I'll just quickly bring up again, that's why this doesn't work, but because of all that work in creating a structure, um, you know, because structs have got their own uh, kind of internal layout that can have things like foo query be members of them, it does do the initial creating the struct and actually setting the value when you do new true, but it doesn't create the true Ruby methods for doing the getting and setting, which is why this code of James's fails. Um, I'm not sure how much of this is a bug in Ruby or not, or even an oversight. Uh, it seemed like an oversight to me, and I think it probably should not allow um, you to create struts with this type of mechanism, but I could be wrong. I'm not uh, part of the Ruby core team or anything like that, so... Just thought I'd bring this up. Thought it was an interesting uh, kind of bit of spelunking into the uh, MRI code, um, and you may be interested in having a dig around and uh, possibly even turning this into an issue on the Ruby Tracker one day if you get a bit further than I do. So thanks for watching.